Good afternoon. Thank you for the opportunity to share with you our recent experience with XCV Next Strain. It is a privilege to speak on behalf of all share members who contributed to the data and scientific expertise. Today, I would like to share with you some of the features and capabilities of the XCV Next Strain. The Next Strain platform was originally developed by GSEC for monitoring influenza viruses and recently for COVID. We adapted this platform to display XCV drug resistance and transmission. This project is work in progress, and I look forward to hearing your suggestions for improvement. So let's get started. There are three display panels in the XCV next string, the phylogenetic tree, the map, and the diversity pane, where it shows the open meeting frame of NS5A at the moment. In the QRE panel, which is located on the left, we have built in many different functions to characterize XCV drug resistance. In this demo version, I only included a small subset of sequences from Germany, Italy, Spain, and Australia. Let us first look at the genotype distributions. In the final genetic tree, you can see that the sequences are nicely grouped into genotype 1A, 1B, and genotype 3. We only have a few sequences in genotype 4 and genotype 6. And the genotype 2 sequences are located at the bottom of the tree. In this cohort, we group the patients into five age groups, those who were 75 or older. The boomers are between mid-50s to mid-70s, and those in generation X are mid-40s to mid-50s, generation Y are mid-30s to mid-40s, and generation Z are mid-20s and younger. As you see from the map, over half of the patients in Germany and Italy are baby boomers or older. The cohort population in Spain and Australia are a bit younger. By expanding the geographic resolution, we see that the population is relatively young around the metro area in Sydney. Specifically, there's a cluster of patients of mid-40s or younger. This is a town called Woolman, where there is a prison facility, and this is where most of the samples came from. Let us take a look at the treatment and biologic profile of these patients. The regimens are color-coded based on the NS5A inhibitors. Notice that in genotype 1A and 1B, most of the patients were prescribed with latipasvir followed by ombitasvir. There are a small number of patients uh, treated with albasvir and dacartasvir. In the patients who were infected with genotype 3, there is a even split between wapatasvir and dacartasvir. Interestingly, there seems to be a preference for prescribing dacartasvir in Italy and Australia. This might have reflected prescription preferences and the reimbursement policy of the respective countries. In terms of treatment history, there is almost an equal proportion of treatment experience and treatment naive in the three countries in Europe. For the patients in Australia, most of them are treatment naive. You can also examine a specific subgroup of interest using the filters at the bottom of the display panels. For example, you might be interested to look at the treatment response, specifically the sustained viral response between two groups, the treatment experience with cirrhosis versus treatment naive and uh, without cirrhosis. After selecting the filters for the treatment experience and uh, cirrhotics, here we can look at the top of the screen. And there is a viewing counter here. We see that 69 subjects who are treatment experience and cirrhotic achieve sustained viral response. Let us take a look at the treatment naive 
and non-serotics. Here we see that almost twice as many of the tumor naive and non-serotic achieve sustained viral response as compared to the treatment experience in serotics. And there is 151 patients here. Suffice it to say, we are interested in the characteristics of drug resistance mutations and the potential transmission. In this program, we have built in three different functions to look at if the subject has selected drug resistant mutation, the number of mutation, and the resistance patterns. Let us take a look at their follow-up time points. As shown in the pie charts, for subjects who fail DAE therapy, over 80% of these subjects selected drug resistance mutation. This is quite consistent in all four countries. You can also see how drug resistance mutation was developed over time in a little movie. In this data set, drug resistant viruses were first observed in Brisbane, Canberra, Adelaide, Sydney, North, Italy, Germany, and many cities. There is an expansion of drug resistance due to the increasing usage of DAA in the last five years. Next, let's take a look at the number of mutations. As seen from the pie charts, most of the DAA failures selected zero to two resistant mutations at the visit follow-up visits. Please note that most of these DAA failures were infected with the epidemic strains, such as genotype 1A, 1B, and genotype 3A. For those who were infected with uncommon genotypes, we can once again use the filter to look at the biology profile of these subjects. Here, I am selecting genotype 1I, 1K, 1L, etc. When I said uncommon genotypes, what I meant was that they were uncommon in developed countries where most of the clinical trials took place. They might be common in other parts of the world, but we have not studied them extensively. Now I have selected my whole collection of uncommon uh, subtypes and genotypes. Let's take a look. Comparing to the epidemic strains, which normally selected zero to two mutations, patients infected with the incoming genotypes tend to select multiple numbers of mutations in three, four, five, six, and seven. Lastly, let us look at the resistance patterns. Here is a list of resistance patterns in decreasing order of prevalence. The use of filters, again, is a powerful way to visualize drug resistance patterns. For example, here we see that mutation 93 is present in all genotypes. However, when we choose another very common mutation at position 30, we find that this mutation is primarily selected by genotype 1A and genotype 3. Mutations at 93 and 31, however, is exclusively selected by genotype 1B. The visual display coupled with filters allow us to examine drug resistance patterns in any specific subgroups with only just a few clicks. Finally, let us also examine the potential transmission clusters. Let us look at the East Coast of Australia. Here we have quite a few genotype 3 sequences from the Australian dataset. You can double click the node at the base of the tree to expand the tree. 
And if you are interested in the area of sequences, say around here, you can also double click it to further expand it. You can relay the sequences with the geographic location by mousing over the cities. If you have some sensitive information, they are not PV to the public XCV next frame, but you want to examine this information in relation to the phylogenetic network and the geographic location. For example, if you have information on injection drug use, ethnicity, HIV, gender, etc., all you need to do is to drag this file into the XCV next frame. This can be done in the absence of internet. You can also share the XCV next string display the JavaScript with your colleagues. Your collaborators can see the display on the, from their desktop. Once again, all they need to do is to, is to take the JavaScript that you send them, drop it into the auspice.us site. And here I have a full-length XCV instead of the ms 5 a I hope you find this platform interesting. I think this platform can also be useful for monitoring HIV drug resistance and transmission, especially in the area of new integrase inhibitors and long-acting regimens. If you have any questions or suggestions, or you would like to contribute your data to put onto the map of the XCV next ring, please contact me at anita.how at bccdc.ca. Thank you very much for your time and attention.